Mr. Happy McDonald. Monday. Happy Monday to you. You know, I was, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to go and add us to the, uh, create the live stream, but I was going to say that when I see you on, um, I was playing TF2 and I thought, okay. I invite Sean to that. I don't know that you have it downloaded. Do you ever play it? Um, I, you know, I do have it downloaded. I've never played it. I played the original Team Fortress quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. On, well, you know, the Half-Life mod. Well, I've started, uh, so I, I've got you know, two of my boys, and, and uh, so we've started the three of us go in and play together, and then, uh, like, my son Nick will actually sit on the phone and, uh, and, and chat while it's going on. Oh, cool. And it's just, it's a little more fun when you, when you know the people and you can organize yourselves. Yeah, I agree. Because people are stupid. They don't play as teams. Like, <laughs> if we all stuck together, we would win every time. And people split off. and uh, It's like a rushing zombie horde. <clears throat> exactly. Most of the time. Exactly. All right, let me yeah. hit, kick off the live stream here. Hang on. Sounds good. Anything else exciting going on this weekend? Uh, no, just eating jelly beans with my coffee. Oh, that's nice. That, that's, that's the whole weekend. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually I, this is a little, uh, a little sick, but I was playing, uh, magic, the gathering online this weekend. Oh, Hey, that's cool. I'm a big magic guy. Yeah. And I was, um, tuning my a particular deck i have called S soylent green huh, yeah. it's people you know it in this case <laughs> it is yeah <laughs> the way the deck works is um basically i've got uh several artifacts and whatnot i'll take uh the opponent's creatures attack them with them with their own creatures and then I'll feed them through this witch's oven, which generates food, which gives me more life. So, yeah. So I'm in green. It, it literally is. That's right. That's hilarious. Uh, you know, I would, so I was never a, uh, a Magic the Gathering player, but I was, you know, huge into D&D &D as a mm. kid. I had, uh, so back in, so like 79, 80, um, there was a kid that was three, four years older, um, single mom, huge house, parents divorced, dad was a world traveler, like sent him a monkey. That's, really? Yeah. It got taken away that somebody, he was out walking with it. Uh, he had it for less than a week. Somebody did he, did he shock him. the monkey? Uh, no, but he, uh, he, he took care of that thing. But, uh, yeah, so the city came and took it from him and, and, uh, and then he, I, I believe it went into the uh, the monkey area at the Oakland Zoo, which is pretty incredible over there. And anyway, That's so he was impressive. able to go visit it. It was really sad, but this is a kid who had, like, he was hardcore into the lead figures, painting mm. them and stuff. Yeah. And in his kitchen, uh, again, this is a massive house. It was probably, I don't know, 5,000 square feet for two people to be in. Plants everywhere, exotic birds. Uh, dogs wow. and cats, just everything. In the kitchen, there was this little pool where they had the sucker fish in there. So they go in there, feed them, and go. Oh, the placostomus. Yeah, and uh, that was very cool. But so I, I go over there, and he's, he says, Oh, I've rigged this, and we're going to play D&D. &D. So we used to go over and play where he set himself up where he was in the center and he created ply, um, plywood and had built walls and move your physical lead figures mm -hmm. through the dungeon. And he was <laughs> cool. sitting in the center of this thing with it going around. It was just, it, it was awesome. It sounds awesome. Um, I, I don't think I mean, he was hanging out with, uh, with elementary school kids. So I don't think in high school he had many friends. I can understand that. It, it, yeah. He sounds like one of those kids whose uh, parents were always gone and trying to keep him busy with something but uh just really wanted companionship yeah yeah i'm that, that's what it sounded like he he went on um brian i i understand that he went on to uh um build software and gaming 
and did very well. Cool. But uh, anyway, well, hey, we're, we're live. We're streaming. Um, thanks for those that are joining. Uh, Sean, <laughs> thanks for joining as well. And My pleasure. And uh, what's the t-shirt you have on there? Ambient Highways. Oh, Is that, uh, what's his name? Uh, Late night? I am sporting Mr. Keith Ritchie's oh, wares today. Hey, nice. I am, I would say I'm his number one fan, but I would be uh, contested, I'm sure. Well, yeah, I, I, I follow some of this stuff that his, his antics, we've talked about that, uh, uh, even the possibility of doing a studio project and yeah. Yeah. So he's a, he is a fantastic, uh, musician probably isn't the right word, but composer, uh, artist. creator of music. Yeah. yeah artist. Yeah. Um, he's really evolved over the years and created some really good stuff. So Keith Ritchie. Yeah, people should go check them out. Uh, but here we are. So we've got uh, a couple dozen folks that are watching across two different live stream locations. And we have one person who's joined on, on Zoom. Welcome. If anyone has questions that they have around uh, Microsoft products or services, and uh, we're, we're here to do our best to answer them. And we should have some other folks that will jump in. Um, for the next hour and then we'll do this again this evening as well and everybody's welcome so yeah we're Any, hoping people are going to jump in yeah. somebody's got to show up with answers <laughs> or or questions <laughs> or questions yeah yeah sure enough in the last week any if you run into anything seen any questions run into anything that you wanted to uh discuss to kick things off i'm trying to think of I've hit anything myself. I'm looking in at, see if there are any questions posted. Not seeing anything currently. But uh, well, a lot of people that, uh, that we know and love from the community that are liking the fact that we're doing this. That's great. Thank you for those likes. And Clifford, Thank you for your hand waving icon. Clifford. <laughs> uh, you say Clifford, I think the big red dog. I'm uh, sure that's not the case here, but I, yeah, I, don't, I can't hear that name and not think that with it kids. It doesn't look like the, the large red dog. No, no. <laughs> I, I would think not. I don't think it's him. So, yeah. So uh, anyway, so any questions that you have, uh, we'll monitor and, and, uh, and take them. Um, yeah, I was just thinking, uh, I, I didn't publish any, I've got a couple this week of new productivity tips that I'll be posting over to my blog and Buckley Planet. I, I don't know if you saw, I've got, I did like you know, six in a row. I think I've got one that just went live today. I've got two more recordings of uh, MVP buzz chat. So then, I saw that you had a couple new ones. You, you are just a content machine, Christian. It, it's just, uh, it's just ramped up. Well, I'm doing the whole one post a day at, a, at least, but then of course it's a lot that's, more than that. Cause I'm doing stuff for clients as well. That's impressive. Yeah. So, so Clifford is asking the question and I'm looking over here to the, uh, that he's on the watch party out on the office 365 group. He asks, has, hi, I work in education. We don't use Teams hmm. yet. What's the Probably best way to start with it? That's a good question. Um, best way to start with it. Uh, so, Clifford, do you have Teams available to you as software right now? Have you downloaded it? Sorry, I'm trying to. Like, we've got a little bit of delay on on that, but uh, yeah. One of, one of the things that I was going to say: look, there's a lot of courseware that's out there, some free stuff that's out there, but the best place to start is in uh, docs.microsoft.com. So their adoption resources uh, are fantastic. So let me I'll let me paste the uh, the URL in the multiple locations. Yeah. The uh, one thing that's noteworthy about docs.microsoft.com for those who may not know it is 
the bulk of that information is authored and curated by the community at large. So folks like uh, Mark Anderson and Sue Hanley and Julie Turner and a whole host of people, anybody who wants to contribute to the project can get in on it. Um, I think Mark kind of unofficially acts as traffic cop or director for many of the uh, pull requests, but um, that stuff is authored by you guys. It's, it, it's good information. And so um, if something comes up or is new or uh, looks like it's a sticking point in the community, there's a good chance if you talk about it in a uh, forum like this or uh, with another person who happens to be part of that project, you can get information baked into the documentation. So uh, docs is a good place to be. Yep, there we go. Christian with the screen share. Yes. Yeah, so you can see there's just, and this of course, it, it, it gets modified, um, they updated uh, fairly regularly. Um, but this is a great place All the to time. go and, and, and start, uh, you know, they, they, again, from the quick start. Um, and so they actually walk you through a methodology. They give you, provide you templates as you're ro rolling this out with suggestions or best practices for adoption and engagement, um, to how to kind of, you know, to measure that success. Um, so th just, uh, the tools and downloads, um, project plans, example personas and work styles, just a ton of content that's out there. This is it's great. We always talk about it. You know, Sean and I both come from the SharePoint community side of things. Um, we always talk about how the, um, the SharePoint community really got underway and was so strong because of uh, the lack of documentation. Mm, uh, within yeah. the community in the early days. And so a lot of us that got involved back in the uh, early to mid 2000s, even later, it you know, came through providing a lot of this kind of guidance. The fact that Microsoft learned from that, there's so many community people. I mean, Karawana Gatimu, who's driven a lot of this effort, and not, not to put say it's all because of Karawana, though I think a lion's portion is due to, to Karawana. But she was a, uh, a you know huge uh, community personality and influencer. Um, she co-ran the uh, SharePoint user group in Los Angeles. She joined Microsoft and had this experience of lack of tools and just so she was very vocal and driving and creating a lot of these kinds of online assets. So definitely take a look at that. Yeah, lots of community folks uh, going to Microsoft, and when they go into Microsoft, they bring their tools and their ideas and thoughts with them. So yeah. it's a constant yeah. influx of uh, good stuff. And, uh, and they, they often disappear from us, from the community side. <laughs> well, they, they get busy or something. I don't know. Yeah. They're, uh, they're a little less uh, prevalent, I guess, in the events and whatnot. So I see a question from Nguyen uh, about uh, how long until teams update the virtual background and more than four camera. You know, we don't know. They, we, we hear this stuff is all forthcoming. We don't know when it's actually going to be made available. Yeah. Uh, so I, yeah, I think that this, uh, the coronavirus stuff is kind of uh, delayed all of that. They, I believe it's all supposed to happen here in the first half of the year. Um, I don't know the latest though, but. Yeah. yeah, nor do I. Yeah. Um, yeah. Clifford's also asking about using Zoom. And I answered for somebody who said, why aren't you using Teams for this? Um, it, it's the, the, there's a couple of reasons why we're using uh, a Zoom here. Number one reason is because Teams doesn't live stream. Teams is an enterprise technology. It's really, it, while you can have anybody, invite anybody to a Teams meeting, it's predominant, it's core use case is within your organization. Um, and so it's really strong, very secure, has all of those other features. When you're doing uh, something like this, just a, a webinar that's out that's anonymous access to the public, and you want to simulcast in one or more locations, Teams does not do that. 
So for the longer version of that, like we could go use some other third party technology, do everything within Teams and then simulcast on that, it would mean that we would have to then use, have a multiple points of potential failure, multiple technologies to get that all coordinated and working where yes, Zoom indeed. does it out of the box. Right. So, you know, it's one of those things where for webinars, uh, I pay for Zoom and I run my webinars off of it because it does a, a long list of things that uh, Teams doesn't do for external webinars. But whenever I do community stuff, user groups, all of that stuff, or internal meetings, everything's on Teams. I don't use Teams, Zoom at yeah. all. Typically, when I've done uh, user group presentations too, everybody has Teams in their pocket. So just a kind of a go-to tool for that situation. Yep. And is that, uh, do I see, is that Melinda Morales? Is that you hanging around there? Raise your hand if that's you. I can always add uh, Melinda. Hey, Melinda, come, come join the conversation. What are you doing? Sitting over there on the sidelines. Don't be shy. It's the end of her day and she has time to join. Hey, <laughs> greetings. How are, how are things from the, from the middle of nowhere UK? I'm unmuting you now. There you go. You're unmuted. Hello. 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 How are things going? It's okay. I don't have a headset, so hopefully it's not echoey or anything. No. No. You're yeah. good. Good. To be, good oh. to go. So, what's the uh, Melinda? What are the latest? What are, what kinds of? Uh, well, actually, maybe you comment on. Uh, so, pointing to those um, the Microsoft Teams adoption tools. Any other guidance? Where do you, because you do this for a living. You, you answer these kinds of questions for, for Dyson. Um, any other resources that are your go-to resources for new people? Um, you, well, I definitely use those that you were showing all the time, myself and also to share with users. Um, <laughs> as I'm sure you guys know, you're continually learning too. <laughs> it's not like you're the expert forever. I mean, you have to use those things too, so I definitely do that. <laughs> you sound like you're losing your voice a little. Have you been screaming at customers all day? I have been working on a really big project for about four weeks straight. So <laughs> that's what it looks like. Plus, I'm in the UK where it's a little bit later for me. Getting a little run down then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hopefully, it's not the virus. We don't talk about that. No. Hopefully. Well, I, I don't know how you could get it. You're in the middle of, you are in the middle of nowhere. I am. There's sheep around me. <laughs> I usually don't refer to my customers as sheep, but that's me. You know. Yeah. So, uh, well, well, very cool. So, any other any other questions that uh, that you've run into? I'm I'm we're kind of monitoring the live stream, seeing if there's any other questions coming in. Any questions that you've seen, maybe that you've not been able to answer, coming in from your customers? Um, let me think through. So right now I'm doing a lot of, um, like best practice type of stuff. Yeah. It's always helpful. Um, in our organization, we've seen, of course, a major increase in usage in our team's environment. Um, so I'm having to do a lot of, kind of retroactive <laughs> education on how people can use teams and things like that. And so, um, I like a lot of the tips that are just the general things that most people don't even think of anymore when you've been using it for a while, like, um, titling every conversation that you put in, you know, is something that's so important. Um, and one of the biggest things that I see people struggle with when they first adopt is just not replying in line to conversations, things like that. Um, so I've definitely been uh, spending a lot of time putting together some blog posts internally on on how to do those kind of things. Well, you know, that Tom and I in our productivity tips webinars, and we cover a lot. Once in a while, we get somebody that's like, "This has been around for years." We're like. Right, and yet half the audience has never seen it before. And so it's, you have to remember that, especially if you're more on the, we're always all learning, but if you're more on the expert side, you're sharing these things, finding these things is don't forget those kind of, uh, you know, 101 tips that just because you know it doesn't mean others know it. So like I, I like every once in a while, I'll tweet out like how to get to the, uh, uh, the, the keyboard shortcuts, shortcuts list. It's been there since day one, so three and a half years. It's not new, and yet people are like, wow, I had no idea that was there. So. Yeah, I know with SharePoint Saturdays and whatnot, it's always the same conversation. There's always somebody 
just coming in. It's their first SharePoint Saturday. They're getting their 101 information. Um, they're just trying to pick up tips to help them survive at work. So session material that feels old to you might be new to someone else, typically is. Have you guys talked about the like, what is it called? The learning pathways thing as well? I don't believe so. Is that, the, is that what it's called? The kind of training solution that Microsoft has out that you can like spin up in your tenant now? Yeah, so the, the oh. actually blogged about that. Yeah, learning pathways. There's, there's kind of two parts to that. So one, it's a communication site template. So it's something that you can go and do. And if you have your SharePoint environment and you can download that and create a central place to go and and provide all of these kinds of uh, uh, you know, resources. The, the, what's great is on the second part of that is filling that with content. So Microsoft then has captured all of this knowledge across every individual workload or product. Uh, and so you can go and curate which content is gonna be most needed, most uh, you know, relevant to your organization and then populate that, that template with that content. Um, just a second, I'll go grab the link to the blog post on that. I've got some screenshots as well. Yeah, it's a great solution. Have you guys deployed that yet? We use it, yeah. It's something that's been really powerful for us actually. So I took it and then I kind of built around it a lot of stuff that's specific to our organization. So it became a really good way for us to communicate out the policies and guidelines and everything that relate to us as well as leveraging what Microsoft's put together with, I think amazing, um, especially for getting started on um, just that high level kind of guidance, right? Well, and that's kind of, that's, that's kind of the key too, is that you're, uh, you should tailor it for your organization. You can take, they, they, they provide some out of the box pathways, but you can go and customize that and do a mix of, of the Microsoft provided content, community content, and your own internal guidelines and, and content as well. Uh, let me post that link into three different locations. Yeah, as always, looking at the questions, there's always the, uh, uh, we, we get three or four people every time we do this saying, well, why aren't you using Teams? <laughs> to do this broadcast, and I'll say it again, is because out of the box with Teams, you cannot live stream. And uh, yeah, if you are using a third-party solution like OBS to go and do that, it can be done. Uh, but then you have multiple technologies that you have to go and set up and to do that when, of course, this is uh, out of the box. And, uh, and yeah, and, and then the other the other piece of this is that uh, as uh, Pedro is saying is like no you can uh, no the live events on stream live or stream don't need to be configured um, it, it you know, so yeah it's the it, it's doing the, uh, the the live events is different it has different functionality and that's great for webinars and for the interactive stuff I'm you know Pedro thank you we, we all use both of those technologies and I'm aware of the limitations and I've yeah. still selected this technology as being easier. Yeah. The cost of entry is very low with Zoom. Yep. So, uh, yeah, we're, uh, we've got a list of requirements. In fact, it's a, it's an open discussion right now on one of the RD lists um, where we're talking about the same thing. And I kind of outlined, I said, look for the stuff that I'm doing that's external and I have a list of four things. I said, until teams can do those four things, I'll continue to pay for Zoom for webinars. But I don't use, uh, you know, the, uh, like this is the webinar capability for the live streaming. I don't use um, uh, Zoom for regular chat, you know, one-on-one -on -one type stuff. So it's, you know, a little bit different, so. Like you said, there's a place for each one, right? Like it's not, I, I think people are getting caught up in making them competitors. Like just because you have video, video streaming capability doesn't mean that you're head to head direct competitors, kind of apples and oranges. Right. Agreed. Hal looks frozen in time. <laughs> 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 
There he there is. He is. Oh. Muted. Sorry about that. <laughs> Coffee first, folks. Coffee first. <laughs> <laughs> it is a necessity. Oh. Good times. Well, good morning <laughs> and good evening to Melinda. Yeah. Yeah. Where excellent. are you uh, over in the UK, Melinda? I am out in the southwest. So I'm in a little tiny village called Tetbury. Mm. <laughs> You'll have to look it up. And there's sheep. Sheep, yeah. Yeah, we've established that, yes. <laughs> Melinda and sheep. It was pretty cool. Yeah, Melinda and I got to hang out in December when I was over in, in town. So it, it was, how long did it take you to get into London? It's about an hour and a half train. Not so bad. No. Back when I worked for Procter & Gamble, um, I was sent over to do some work for a bit. We had a, a uh, facility in Egham, Egham, England, which was, I think, just west of London somewhere. I don't know the topology. <laughs> I don't know either. I've been out here a year and I still don't know all the places. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you have a good weekend? Yeah, it was pretty nice. Uh, it was quiet. <laughs> of course, they're always pretty nice and quiet around here. It could rain Saturday. That was kind of nice. Yeah. One of the rare occurrences. That, yeah. We got a little bit of rain out of the deal. Sunday's nice and clear. Today looks like your typical Arizona day. It'll be in the probably the low 80s. It snowed in us on us yesterday in uh, Salt Lake City. It didn't stay on the ground, but most of the day snow was coming down. So that was it's cool. hilarious. Yeah. 80 yeah. in one, snow in another. Yeah. That happens here all. I mean, it, it's April. It would not surprise me if it snowed before the end of the month was over, or at least yeah. at least snowed up in the mountains. Wow. Uh, not likely to get anything down here. It takes a pretty good storm for that to happen. But, but uh, the you know, when you're down in the valley with 9,000-foot mountains around the outside of you, getting snow on them is no mean feat at all. You remember so my son? A, a my son was... We will have it. My son was living in, uh, in Payson and spent some time in Sholo, uh, Arizona. Uh, and, uh, and he would talk about, uh, you know, the, the winter and, and getting around. And he's like, oh, we're up in, you know, up in the mountains. I'm like, I had not been to that part of Arizona. I've always flown into Phoenix and, you know, Mesa and everything kind of around that. And, and I'm just like, mountains, what are you talking about? So we did a road trip down there. Uh, did, did the southern parks through uh, southern Utah, which are incredible, and yeah. But then drove and went and visited friends in Payson, and then spent the next what is it three hours driving downhill to get yeah. down to Phoenix. And yes. you're just like, we're still going downhill. You know? <laughs> it's like, what, what is this? And and uh, yeah, it was. It, it's it's incredible to think, especially we stopped off. And it, you know, generally, I don't think of the, the thick forests. It, I don't think of Arizona. Of course, it has, you know, huge forests and, and parks. It does indeed. We're, we're driving at one point where, uh, you know, we, you know, we pull over to a little, he's like, there's a lookout. I'm like, a lookout? There's, we're, we're at the bottom of, a, of nothing, you know? And, and we go over and there's this huge, of course, it's the tributaries that become the Grand Canyon, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the middle of Colorado. Oh yeah, little scratches in the ground. That's right. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's just, just, yeah. just beautiful. Yeah, the uh, the upper end of the Colorado River uh, of, of the Grand Canyon, when it's just starting out, uh, the canyon walls are certainly not as steep, but the colorful and the shapes and and so forth are at least as spectacular as seeing the gray the, the, the main canyon itself. In fact, it's a somewhat it's somewhat better because you can actually see the water running, which from most of the lookouts from the, the main Grand Canyon is a mile plus beneath you. So it takes you know a pair of binoculars to see it, and in only in select places. Wow. Um, and Clifford also brings up there's a, a wonderful Indian antique shop in Tetbury. 
there are a lot of antique shops in Tetbury. <laughs> That's what we have. <laughs> I just like it. It's it's very close to Swindon, so awesome. It's kind of close, yeah. <laughs> as close as you can be to anything out here. Uh, <laughs> hey, Christian. So, yeah. you know, I've been a big user of Prezi for a oh, long yeah. time. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Are they so, dying or what? No, I, we had a um, presentation by some folks at a uh, bright carbon. Um, I think they put it on for the MVPs, but it was a PowerPoint presentation. How to use. That uh, was awesome. Yes, it was how they were uh, showing the capabilities of um, PowerPoint now and how to use things like the zoom and morph capabilities that are now part of PowerPoint. And I, I was dumbfounded. It looks like I can probably drop that Prezi subscription that I've been using. I, uh, I, I use the back morph. to PowerPoint. I use the morph a lot, which would be, it's really cool and do some really nice effects. I've not done anything that has that zoom in zoom out capability. There's something similar in PowerPoint. Yeah. Yes. Called zoom. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, uh, so is that anything recorded? Anything you can point us towards to go take a look? Um, yeah, I, so if you go out to brightcarbon.com, those are the folks who did this and they had a number of uh, compelling demos during the presentation. Lots of very, very cool stuff. All right. So All I right. think I'm going to take my presentations another direction. I'll, I'll have to take a look at this. I just posted a link there. I'll po post it. There we go. Yep. That's I think one. Zoom is amazing. Um, but just, I think the last time I was playing it, I found out that with different versions of PowerPoint, it doesn't present the same. So hmm. if you're presenting, it's great. But if you're distributing, just be cautious of that. Ah, ah. gotcha. Good to know. Well, I know the problem I have with Prezi, I've used Prezi for many, many years, and I love being able to just manipulate the, the canvas and zoom in and out and whatnot. The only way I can distribute the materials is to dump my frames to a PDF. Uh, and it works, but it is not nearly as compelling. condensed. Yeah. Condensed. I wasn't going to say compelling, but <laughs> well, if, but I mean that's part of it. That's part of the strength of that a solution. And, and as you know, I used it there for a couple years, and and uh, uh, you know had some really f uh, some fun with it. In fact, I I just put together a right a, a collection of my top ten viewed slide decks on SlideShare uh, like a week ago. And one of them was one of my SP TechCon joke <laughs> decks where yeah. I was making fun of Todd Clint's hair and Richard Harbridge's haircuts. And um, there's a slide around that. But I used to have one where it would, it, you know, showing some technical diagram and then it zoomed in dramatically to like Todd Clint's face and then I made fun <laughs> of his haircut and zoomed back out. And just, you know, a lot of it was fun. good for that. Yeah. It'll be neat That's to try funny. That it's funny hearing you say that, Christian, because I swear I've heard you present and say that you use like the design ideas because you can't put effort into how slides look. Well, I just said that you can it, put it, effort it, into that. Yeah. So, well, that's the, that's the thing. I would spend so much time on on making slides, and I, and still, you know, and I would I would painstakingly design my presentations, and it still looked like crap compared to somebody would somebody some people just have that gift of making these beautiful slide decks. Um, it's kind of like, it's like Tracy Vanderskiff doing her social images stuff. I'm like, she, she, she's able to use like two or three tools and do these really cool little designs. You're like, it would take me a couple hours to do something like that. What are you, what are you doing? She's like, oh no, I just do it on my phone and just, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, yeah. So I, I've, I love the ideas. In fact, I just, uh, in fact, I'm looking at my blog post now. Uh, I was looking for that list. I'll show you this other slide, but yeah, I talked just presented on uh, visualize the data with ideas in Excel. And so again, it, we hear about all this cool stuff in Power BI and how to create these advanced uh, visual visualizations around your data. Like I don't have the time for all that. Well, now you can just literally go into an Excel spreadsheet, select the table of data that you want to create a visualization 
click on the ideas uh, for Excel and it will, uh, you know, the side menu comes open with a bunch of visualizations. You can then filter the view to focus in on specifically what you want to present about and then insert that, uh, that pivot table directly in as a tab and cut and paste the little graph into your presentation. It's really slick. One step removed from the presentation writing itself. Yeah. So do we have, are there ideas for any other, are, we have ideas for Excel, ideas in PowerPoint. Is it anywhere else that I've missed? Looking for that list. <coughs> There it is. All right. I, I just, I have to show you this, this slide. Hang on. Let me find it. Oh yeah. Here it is right here. <laughs> That's right. Uh, all right. Um, let me, uh, let me share this just so you know what I'm talking about. That's where the disclaimer comes out and That's right. <laughs> sign this uh, form. Uh, yeah. So here's the, uh, so this is the, the the list of most downloaded slide decks for the past decade. So they go down. So this one, oh, this had uh, almost 7,700 views. SharePoint 2063 predictions on governance best practices for SharePoint Wave 87. <laughs> 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 so it's really short, but uh, you know, we're talking about governance, and that was this, this. This is the end of the content right there. So here's the future of SharePoint. Skynet. Very good, yeah. Universe. Um, the world has changed dramatically, but I've seen it. I did time traveling. I did it in a Ford Fiesta. Um, <laughs> what I learned the flux, flux capacitor. It's fake, yeah. people. Apparently, just a movie prop. Um, clothing has changed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, some things have been outlawed. Tapioca pudding. Uh, anything related to Jeff Roski posing, modeling. Um, bowling. Mark Miller looking like a mountain man. Uh, some hairstyles can get you arrested. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting uh, uh, comparison uh, being drawn there. Yeah, so uh, and I, I, I imply that SharePoint has integrated um, advanced um, technology like the clapper. <laughs> um, oh, brother. The downside is that native metadata management still sucks. <clears throat> you know, so. Yeah, some uh, things don't change. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. It. Anyway, good times, good times. All right, let me I'll go back and look and see, do we have any other, any questions? Uh, Bueller, Bueller. Bueller, Bueller, yeah. Let's see, do, do, do. Yeah, yeah, Clifford makes a comment, says, when I do a PowerPoint, it looks like I made it on Windows 95. Yeah, you and me both. <laughs> <laughs> oh, welcome to the club, Clifford. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway. Um, yeah, there's a, it, it's, it, it's, it's cool to see. Um, I mean, it's, it's nice to go to a conference and get kind of a big bang release of, Here's a new product. Here's everything. This new capability, and what is is is, uh, is more difficult uh, is that we're seeing this this steady trickle come out. It's it, every yeah. week there's something new somewhere, and we're you know, chasing them down, trying to figure out what those things are. I've been pay paying attention, obviously, to Teams capabilities, SharePoint capabilities, to some degree, uh, you know, OneDrive. Uh, Yammer, um, so the collaboration technologies, and then because of the productivity stuff, I'm also paying attention to the off suite, uh, just at, at, at a high level. I skim through the release notes and things like, ooh, hey, there's a new feature that's coming out in PowerPoint Online, or, you know, hey, there's this new thing that uh, Sway has a new integration or capability. Uh, and, and most people, they miss those things because they're buried down in the, in, in the, the blog posts. Uh, yeah, why don't you uh, actually put the link out roadmap.office.com for folks who look all this stuff up here. Hang on. 
Uh, <laughs> no, just type what I said. <laughs> no lookup needed. I, know, I just got multiple screens. Oh, <laughs> oh that excuse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, roadmap.office.com. That's, you know, anybody who's asking for what's going to be coming out, when it's due to hit my tenant, when it's due to go live, feature sets or features that maybe were planned but aborted, all that stuff is on roadmap.office.com. I haven't been out there for quite a while myself. 271 in development. Wow. Yeah, you can see it by product, by platform, when it's due to hit. Of course, when it's due to hit is, <laughs> that's kind of a wet your finger and put it in the wind sort of thing because rolling out to a gajillion tenants takes uh, more than 15 minutes, unfortunately. 20 tops. <laughs> That's the rumor. The rumor? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we end up having little like feature release celebrations in my champions groups because we wait and wait and wait and then it finally somebody spots it and it's like, it's host turned on. have a yeah. good party. <laughs> we got it. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome when you see one of those things show up. Like the pop-out chats party is going to be huge. <laughs> yeah. Really looking forward to that. Yeah. It's, uh, in fact, it's, that's one of those like mini tests on the weekly meetings mm -hmm. of whatever I dial into is I test that. Is that there yet? Is it just going to drop and suddenly I'll double click on something and it'll work? If you don't know what we're talking about, it's uh, like in, inside of Teams to be able to pop out a, a chat so that you're, you're not having to change your primary view, pop out videos, pop out chats, that kind of capability, yeah, that, that is highly anticipated. Yeah, the first time it works, you'll actually hear angelic choirs in the background. <laughs> yeah, so do we have any, any other product questions anything anybody else that is watching through one of the live streams um as we're live streaming in a couple locations which again somebody's came late is is again in wonderment that people within the microsoft community are using zoom <laughs> and the other their zoom is uh for webinars and for live streaming does things that teams cannot. And could we go rig it? Could we run all of this in a teams meeting and, uh, or, or use teams live and then use third party solution to live stream? Yes, we could do that. Or we could use one solution that does it all out of the box, which is what we've elected to do. Cause our, our goal here is to, uh, to get this information out and reach the broadest audience, especially within uh, uh, Facebook and YouTube communities. And so live streaming is the way to do that and keep it anonymous and not require people to download anything. And that's the magic of live streaming. So the tool um, slash product change short. Yes. Clifford's asking, what are your favorite users features? We're talking about, We're talking about team. Uh, and, and maybe uh, we this question while Clifford is, is responding. Um, but uh, Make has, says, I have a question. Is it possible to use Teams within family? Um, so you can, so I don't know if, uh, so there is the free version of Teams that's out there. And so you can go and everybody go and download that. And yes, you can invite anybody to those meetings. You actually don't have to have the, the client. You can invite people via email, any email, and yeah. they join via the browser. And so I was going to say, I, Christian, you know this, that uh, I've got my family in a SharePoint online tenant Office 365 plan. Yep. Um, we use Teams to IM. Um, we've used it. We've use Skype for business back when that was still alive. I know it's still alive, but I want to think it's dead. 
Um, but yeah, uh, teams can be used family wide, you know, whatever you want. If you have a Microsoft account and you have access to the team's client, you can pretty much set up a team's meeting. Yeah. Yeah. We're doing the same thing. So we have, uh, uh, you know, my, my wife doesn't use, use it for a lot of the purposes. She's a, a student right now. So she, they use different platform for all the school stuff. So that's just what she's familiar with. But, all of my family have E3 licenses and we have a space that's built and we'll share documentation. I'm always proud when I, I get a notification to go and review something and it's, it's in teams. It's a, you know, for a while there, uh, my oldest son was, uh, who's married, lives down South for here was, uh, um, updating some things in SharePoint and that was a very <laughs> proud moment, but, uh, life got Probably a pretty to surprising go. moment too. Yes, it was. <laughs> so are you using Teams to communicate with your son in quarantine? Um, we're using, well, so we've got a couple other things going on. So we have, because my in-laws were international, now they're living with us. They got uh, sent home early from, mm -hmm. from the UK, but uh, we were using, um, uh, it? so it is, see, I don't even know the name of it. We're using WhatsApp for the kind of the What's family. That? text ring because it's all just text-based communication so we actually use that for the inter-family chat more than anything else but um and uh and then my daughter insists on using because we've got some extended family members cousins we do a weekly broader family across five six different states um, nice. we just do we do that every sunday evening and we use um, um facebook 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 message. And so it does the same thing where as like Zoom has the multiple, you know, multiple screens and it's what people have because a lot of them don't have uh, Microsoft products. Don't, they don't have Teams. But it's, uh, yeah, for all the community stuff that we do here, the user groups that I'm a member of, the organizing committees, all of that stuff is done in Teams. So, yeah, we, you know, five, six different technologies used sometimes on a daily basis if it ain't broke don't fix it right well you you use the technology and you go where it's it's like why we're using zoom here with with facebook and the the, the live streaming is you know people say well why, why don't you live stream you could go and do this set it up and why don't you live stream to youtube and kind of cut out the middleman of having to post a recording it's like well i don't have hundreds of thousands of followers on youtube yet <laughs> So uh, it would go <laughs> out there. And so we're bringing it to where the community is. And so for some reason, you people like Facebook. Oh, well. Yeah. Anyway, you go where the people are. You people. I'd rather not fight people on the technology and rather just have the conversation. So sometimes that means using multiple technologies. Yep. Find some common ground and use it uh see clifford also asks is, would you recommend using office 365 or teams to share edit documents with people outside your enterprise yes, yes. <laughs> I, I do that every single day yeah. yeah and that's the biggest ask from my organization as well yeah yeah, I've written many articles on external sharing. In fact, I'm working on a, an ebook. I've been working on it for like four months. Haven't finished it. Need to take the time, go finish it. Uh, but on external sharing, it's uh, one of the most common use cases. And uh, there are, depending on I mean, what's what's powerful about, like you could do something as simple as, um, you know, obviously you can, if you've got a SharePoint environment, you can go and, and make, send in an externally available, but time bomb the, uh, the, 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 the you know, limit the uh, viewability of that or editability of that document and share that out via email. Or you can send it as a, a, a OneDrive URL. Uh, do that individually or do that from your organization share. Um, and then you can do that from Teams as well. If you have specific requirements, more detailed requirements of 
what your organization requires you to go in and, uh, and put various compliance, security compliance rules in place around your content, you have that ability with Teams, where you don't have that ability through um, the other cloud storage providers. Yeah. Um, so it, it just it lets you be much more granular, um, but otherwise, yeah. DLP, Azure Rights Management, all yeah. that stuff. So, so Clifford, now hopefully that answers the second part of your question around you know, the security concerns. Uh, if, like I've sent out content where I say, look, this is only open for three days. Uh, it's only, I make it available only to this person and I put a password on it and you can password protect it. So that's the, the item as well. You can put a password on a word doc that you're sharing. So you can be, uh, you know, very selective about, and you can even whitelist, remove, add or remove certain domains to, to ensure that it's not shared outside of, uh, that organization. Um, so there's a lot that you can do if you have, again, if it's very important intellectual property that you want to keep secure. Plus yeah. all of these things, I mean, just straight with very, very minimal configuration. I mean, you can audit all of them. You can track your guest users quite easily um, and then maintain that visibility to what they're doing and where they're doing it. True enough. Yeah. No, that's a great I think there was, Isn't there also like a pin thing now that just came out? For when, for when you're sharing externally, where it sends you a pin, like to your email, you have to verify who you are to access oh, yeah. the document. Oh, yeah. yeah, the, the uh, multi-factor authentication. Yep. Yeah, MFA's been baked in for a while. No, this is a new thing. It's only for sharing. I don't know what it is, but I don't have it on in my organization, but people have it on when they send us stuff. Oh, it's really? like a one-time pin thing. One, oh. I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> Wasn't aware that that had rolled out, but... That would be neat. Yeah. And it I'll may have to look for that. On, it may not be on your tenant yet. That's another wonderful thing about the evergreen updates. It yeah. might still be preview actually. Yeah. yeah can you find that Melinda and share the link. Yeah. I'm looking. How are you, were you going to say something? No, I, I'm just going to ask her if, if, uh, if that's the, or to expand on what you were saying is that there's a lot of teams clients are in various states of, 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 of updates pretty much everywhere. Uh, during the, uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, everybody at Microsoft was touting the ability to do replacement backgrounds like I've got here mm -hmm. in, in Zoom, but that's in Teams and I haven't seen that yet. So I was wondering if that was one of the same features. I'm sure they've got so many builds of the Teams client out there <laughs> in so many different forms. So Mikey yeah. makes a great point. He says in, in his uh, DLP policy, I encrypt emails sharing sensitive information as well as get emails. I also block external sharing with OneDrive and SharePoint. Yeah, so that's that's a, a, an organization's prerogative is to go in there and say, hey, look, we're not going to even allow this. Um, you can turn off the uh, external sharing. You can turn off guest users within your tenant. Um, so all of that can be done at the tent level as well. So you can really lock things down. Now, of course, the, the word of warning for the organizations you're thinking, oh, just go and turn all that stuff off, uh, lock it down, <laughs> is that um, people are like water running downhill, uh, moving around a rock. You put a place of stone in the way, they go right around it. Um, and so that, that's where you, you then also need to go and lock down the ability to go out to Gmail or Hotmail because they'll send sensitive information on a personal uh, email platform to get around some of those rules. Um, right. So get you, good at writing GPOs. If there are, you see, it, it, I, and I'm not saying that you know you, that those policies aren't valid, um, but you need to understand what are our people trying to do, and uh, it, it, you know, and, and am I keeping them from doing their jobs? Uh, and it's fine to go and say, look, there is a process in place for external sharing. Here's what that is. And you need to constantly be out there preaching that standard and that pathway for them to get and to collaborate with people on, you know, inside or outside. Um, that, so it's, yeah, it, as Mikey says, is and Dropbox. Yeah, Dropbox is, mm -hmm. there's a huge surge in Dropbox and other third party solutions. And it's one reason why Microsoft is uh, at least embracing that 
partially through integrations and inviting, you know, Google and Box and Dropbox and uh, Ignite and all of these other solutions that are used, um, rather saying, hey, come integrate in with us, work with us, work within the, the uh, you know, the, the confines of these security and compliance rules that we put in place, um, give people options. If there's a native integration between that third party solution, then it's more likely that people will do it in a secure approved way than an uh, unsecure way. Because people will, it's human nature, we'll find a way. People <laughs> have to do jobs to get their work done and they will find a way. Exactly. You're either working with IT or working around IT. It's one of my favorite Buckley-isms, which is the uh, the more rules that you put in place, or the, now I forgot it. I just screwed it up. Dang it. Uh, <laughs> uh, what was that's it? Buckley-ism. The, the, the phrasing. Oh, that's also a Buckley-ism to do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, the, all right. You know what? Forget it. Never mind. It's on the tip of my tongue, but my mind went elsewhere. But uh yeah, essentially, it's that the, uh, um, the 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 more rules you put in place, the less likely people will use that system. Mm -hmm. A little more eloquently, but I can't remember the more eloquent phrasing for that. But yeah, the more you lock it down, the more people will rebel against the system. Back in my chemistry days, it was overcoming activation energy, the threshold, how much energy you got to put into the system to get the reaction to run. Good times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, Christian, that uh, that uh, presentation on uh, uh, bright. Oh gracious! Bright, bright carbon. carbon. Bright carbon. Bright carbon. Thank carbon. you. Yeah. Uh, if you can, if you can uh, get into the uh, MVP Can Am team, um, it's uh, it's recorded there in the file section. Oh, okay. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, For those of us that can do that, that's online. fantastic. Yeah. That was like last Thursday, right, Hal? Yes. Yeah, four days ago, and it's uh, it's it's sitting in the can and MP and our already MPPs in the meetings subsection. Excellent. The one consistent uh, thread through all the conversations that were going on were everybody felt it was and then incredibly professional well done presentation so hmm. oh yeah yeah clifford asks is any good paid video resources of getting good with office 365 uh, maybe if you could narrow it down yeah office 365 is kind of a broad swath is there any particular workload in Office 365, Clifford? Yeah, for example, like in Teams, I know that uh, Vlad just released like a week or two ago the uh, his uh, Microsoft Teams administration uh, out on Pluralsight. So that course is available now. It's fairly comprehensive. Yeah, much of the Pluralsight stuff is good. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure what's out there through uh, LinkedIn Learning. Um, I know there's some Linda resources, which is also owned by LinkedIn, um, that has some broader, is a lot of more business-focused topics, but has a lot of one-on-one -on -one topics around Office 365, so you can check there. It's Linda with a Y. Um, yeah, but otherwise, I usually I tend to point people towards uh, plural site. Um, and there are, of course, there are um, other resources out there. Um, like we're good friends with uh, Asif Ramani and his company Visual SP. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. So you have that, you know, in context training resources and tons of content of their content. And what I love about uh, a solution like that and I don't know if it, you know, like uh, are you using anything like that Melinda inside of your company I'm trying to as hard as I can yeah there's some great tools like that but what's cool about that is that 
uh, it's this little icon. You, you're basically people are in working wherever they are within the system and they can, you know, basically toggle on this service and it'll pop up all these little icons all over your screen of relevant content to where people are working in context of what they're doing. So how do I use this feature or what, what are some best practices for this or what's our company policy around use of different things. And so you can curate some of that content you can purchase out of the box content. So it's just a great, you know, a great training tool as you're working on adoption and engagement. We've hit the top of the hour. Wow. Are we already there? Oh, we are there. Yeah, we are. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank, thanks a lot for everybody to, uh, for, for joining this. Um, yeah. You know, Clifford just uh, last comment here is, is because of the constant changes, I always find a lot of it is out of date. Yeah, I mean, look, that's that's always that's always going to be the case with training material, uh, but Microsoft is trying to stay on top of that. Uh, that uh, that's why I'm a big believer in, in kind of outsourcing a lot of that content creation to the community content because it, it's it's very quick those updates. It drives home know, like to always check the date on anything you read. Um, anything older than six months to a year, you probably want to question it yeah um, so yeah and I'll, then i'll make this the last question my so mikey since we started a couple minutes late uh, mikey says uh, would you guys say that the microsoft 365 security admin the enterprise admin expert that certification is worth obtaining and to keep up to date I think it's, look, if it's relevant to your role now, it's, uh, if you are, if you get the, a certification like that and stay on top of that, I think it's going to be valuable. There's going to be, there's so much that's coming down the pipe and to be, to have somebody in the organization that's on top of all of that and can answer those questions. I think that you'll uh, become a, an invaluable asset to your organization if you have that yeah, skill. Certification is a certification. It'll yeah. Just recognize that it's not an endpoint that you're getting on a treadmill, that you're going to be constantly updating and integrating new information week after week. So the certification is just a starting point. It is not a destination. It's a journey, not a race. <laughs> no, it, actually, it's a it's a it's a journey where you're on a full sprint the whole time. <laughs> More like a like a train or a plane ticket, really. That's right. <laughs> we're we're where you're you're holding on to the outside of the trainer plan here. <laughs> yeah, you hope you're strapped yeah. in. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, everybody. Thanks, Hal, Melinda, Sean, uh, and uh, we'll be back in what is that? I don't know. Ten hours. Eight hours. Something. Eight hours. Something like that. We're gonna do it again. So we'll do that for uh, Asia Pacific and uh, in the evening for here in the Americas. But uh, thanks a lot, everybody, and we'll talk to you soon. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. If, if all we have is this recording here. But uh, we're having some problems with the live stream. So yeah, we're just talking about some uh, no, known issues. And somebody posted out in the Office 365 group that they uh, added a bunch of people uh, to, their, uh, to their team. They sent out – they created a meeting. So all within the uh, – you know, within the Teams application. I don't know if it was browser or desktop, um, but they created a meeting, invited a dozen people that included a mixture of people in the organization as well as outside the organization, and, and as well as he added himself, and no one received the meeting invites. None of the notifications. The meeting shows up. All the people, the emails that he added, the people that he added are all in there, um, and he's not seeing any of those people and I so I'm not sure what the the hang-up is there's of course issues going back to 2017 of something similar uh, and in uh, all the posts I was looking through trying to find if there was a definitive answer to that and as tends to happen when I'm looking for something that also affects me is that there's no answer to the problem just a lot of people asking the question and support asking follow-up questions with no, no answer. 
So, uh, yeah, so I, I went into the exact same thing, tried to replicate the problem, went and created a, you know, in the desktop uh, application, went and created a meeting. Uh, so as the creator, I, then I sent an email invites to my own Gmail and to my wife's Gmail accounts and uh, haven't seen either of those go through. So the meeting's in there, I can see my name, um, but I don't see those invites. I don't know if you've, Sherman, if you experienced that? I haven't, but what I have had um, experienced lately, especially over last week, it seems to be better today, is just even my, in my test environments. I have two test environments, one for education, one for enterprise. Um, the meetings weren't even just getting, getting creative at all. I would, I would um, do it in teams and you could see the little spinner in there within the meeting. Yep. Um, and the recipient, I believe, got the email notification, but it would never appear in their calendar. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of chalked up to load issues and things like that. Uh, maybe maintenance over the weekend, I'm not sure, but uh, I can't remember if it was last week, late last week or over the weekend. I think it was late last week, actually, I didn't do much on the, on the weekend. I've been trying to get caught up on, um, not to switch topics on you, but uh, as we're talking about support, I've been trying to get caught up on Microsoft Teams or specifically actually get Office 365 for education. Um, bit of a different beast, especially when it comes to Teams and OneNote. Uh, I never played with those. And as we know, a lot of teachers are uh, scrambling, trying to get ramped up uh, as their districts are, or schools are using Teams. So there's a Microsoft Teams for Education Facebook group and I've been trying to help out in there and then realizing maybe about three weeks ago that some of my answers um, weren't relevant or valid because they came from enterprise and not education. Yeah. So that was really interesting. Um, so I, sp I spun up, I, I was finally able to spin up an A5 tenancy demo. Uh, and it's interesting to see that in Teams, you have the classroom teams that looks very different. Um, and I'm also seeing my daughters, both of them in their high school, they're using it. Uh, some of the issues there, they disabled one-on-one -on -one chats. Uh, so I posted a question about that uh, to get other feedback. And, yeah, I didn't even think about nefarious uses, right? Using bad words. Um, if uh, Johnny and Billy are having private one-on-one -on -one chats and it gets out of hand, you know, who, who can see that? I and mean, then can't really see that. I guess they can, but it um, just becomes a nightmare, right? Like they don't, the schools don't want to provide a platform where um, bullying or that kind of bad behavior can occur. So just interesting. All right, I'm trying to solve this uh, this other issue here too. So sorry. No worries. I'm actually answering a question right now. <laughs> uh, it's just spinning. All right. I'm a, yeah. It just it died again. So yeah, there's obviously something going on with the feed there. So which means that we're not going to have any questions coming in. No people coming in. So. Um, yeah, gentlemen, I just say that this is not working. I'm just going to call it and, uh, we'll try again next week. I am, uh, you know, people are, I noticed a couple observations, a couple things. One is that there were, so I went and did, uh, launched it as a watch party on the office 365 community. I saw that two other people also did that. One of them had a bunch of questions not being answered uh and, and so because as other people are adding conversations to that community obviously it pushes that watch party down in the feed so others were able to go off of my feed and host their own watch party but then we were never seeing those questions i didn't realize that it worked like that so that's something to look at next week um and uh 
Yeah. You know, and then my other my other thought is I'm looking at um, Restream or VMix uh, as possible platforms to uh, um, to set up for next week and going forward, which would allow us then to create a Teams meeting and do everything in Teams, but then do a live stream on multiple channels. So uh, I'm getting tired of the whiny people and the people you know, like who don't understand the technology. Be like, oh, look, they're talking about Office 365 on Zoom. And isn't that funny? It's like, okay. So instead of using Zoom, we're going to use Restream or vMix or Twitch or one of these other platforms to essentially do the same thing. But, you know. We'll have less whining because people who don't understand the technology at play, then we'll still not understand. And, but it'll all be good because it'll, it'll on the surface, just all look like teams and they'll be happy. Yep. So, all right, gents. Anyway, thanks for joining. Sorry. Didn't work out, but no problem. Yeah. Sorry. I missed uh, this morning's call. Yeah, no worries. It was, it was a good discussion and we had Melinda Morales on there and got to, poke fun at her so yeah it was great <laughs> no it was great discussion she was sharing some of uh her takeaways from dyson i'm i'm still it's on my agenda to do i've got a little bit of time tomorrow i'm going to upload uh all of the recordings so it should be good all right cool well until right. next time then that's all right talk to you later all right thanks bye, bye. take care bye